Davis hits the layup. Fourth quarter of action. Goes the field, the fast break, hits the shot. The pass to Magna Cardona, gets the two points. Vittorio, thought about the three, baseline drive, lead in, jumper is good. Well defended, out to Bukia, 17 footer, book it. Wins round number one of season 66. For much more than Hassan. First video that did a foul on the nails. Oh! A foul! And LA trying to break down that defense. Steps back for the three. Gets it to go! As Tenorio throws it up. And in! 25 to play Tenorio again and again! Nine straight points! Yeah. Joseph Yo at the forefront of this LaSalle run. Gets the oh. Yo, out to Martona. Martona. Comes closer. Oh. Blocked by Alvarez. Round number two goes to the white shirts of the Ateneo Blue Eagles. 98-89. I have a bunch of uh, overachievers for us making it to the Final Four in spite of a very or relatively young team. And of course, um, it's free naman to aim higher, so I don't think we will... Uh, be contented with being fourth. Just like what I've been saying, I know it's going to be hard, uh, it's going to be difficult twice to beat, uh, we'll be playing the top two teams, but it's not impossible. Yeah, we defeated La Salle in the first round in the second round, but uh, to me, uh, that those two wins uh, don't mean anything. Uh, uh, unless we get to the finals and win another championship. Welcome back here at the Araneta Coliseum. It's the final four of season 66, the biggest rivalry in the Philippines. Ateneo versus La Salle, number one versus number four. One piece of the puzzle already set here in season 66. The FEU Tamaraos have entered the finals here, but Ateneo and La Salle both want to be the second piece of that puzzle entering season 66 and getting that championship. And it is the fabled rivalry, Ateneo Blue Eagles, from Loyola Heights versus the De La Salle Green Archers all the way from Taft Avenue. And this has been an historic matchup. This is round three of uh, season 66's matchups for Ateneo and La Salle. And hello, once again, everyone. Hello, Philippines. Uh, my name is Jude Torquato. Joining me with this coverage is Ryan Gregorio. Good afternoon to you again, Jude, and good afternoon to all the televiewers. Of course, a lot of people are hoping, or were hoping, that this matchup will end up in the finals, but it's not gonna happen. One team, if the Ateneo wins in today's ball game, they're gonna enter the finals, and uh, La Salle needs two wins to make it to the finals. Well, incidentally, there's no number four team who has ever uh, made it to the finals, uh, beating the number one team in twice the ever since they instilled the Final Four matchup uh, here in the UAAP. That's right. It, it's an unfamiliar situation for De La Salle. Since 1994, they either ended up at number one or at number two. This is the first time that uh, they will enter the Final Four at the number four spot, so it's going to be hard for them. But still, it's a great uh, opportunity for La Salle. Nobody expected them to be in this situation, but for Coach Franco Marin, there's a big chance for them to make it via the back door. Well, we did say that this is round number three, meaning they played twice already, one round, uh, first and second round, and uh, both times the Blue Eagles did defeat the Green Archers. So let's take a look at the head-to-head -head matchup in terms of the numbers in those two games. Well, it's uh, really a blowout in the first two games. Ateneo winning by 14 in the first round. 
and uh, 9 in the second round. Look at the points, 90 points for Ateneo and only 78.5 for DLSU. But what is impeccable is the shooting touch of Ateneo, 51.3% from the field as compared to only 38.3 for De La Salle, while the three-point shooting always scorching at 18 of 31 for Ateneo for a very high percentage, 58.1 to be exact, while only 22.8% for La Salle, while on the rebounding, it's still on the side of Ateneo, and the best player in that ballgame for Ateneo has been L.A. Tenorio, 18.5 points and 5.5 rebounds, while Joseph Yu, 18 points and 4 rebounds. If you take a look at the stats, that is the reason why Ateneo won in the first two games. Well, let's take a look at the defending champs. The Ateneo de Manila Blue Eagles. I mean, they were number one, although they were tied in terms of record though, with FEU and UE. But uh, when you talk about Ateneo La Salle, players from both teams usually come to play when it is an Ateneo La Salle game. And uh, we did talk about the starting lineup of Ateneo being uh, the strongest uh, for season 66. But three players in the Blue Eagle lineup really come to play and even put up the level of their play against La Salle. Well, it's always a different kind of competition, a different energy being displayed by the players from both teams. But these three players are really playing so well. Three from, a from Ateneo are playing so well when they go up against uh, La Salle. Look at the numbers of LA Tenorio. Umaakyat yung kanyang numbers against De La Salle and even Larry Punasher from 12.2 points per ball game to a 17.5 clip. And look at the clip from the three-point area from 40% to 83%. And also uh, Bugia, less than 10 points per game against uh, all the other teams but jumped up to 11 points per game against De La Salle. So again, the three players are really playing so well or they like the matchup against their uh, four players from, uh, from uh, De La Salle University. Well, Ryan, a lot has been said about the starting lineup of Ateneo. But, uh, you know, they really do need the bench if they want to win a second straight championship. And one guy who has really come to play, who was injured last year, has been Magno Membrere. Great numbers for Magno Membrere, of course. We did not uh, see him a lot in the first round because of uh, a lot of injuries that was bothering him. In fact, he did not play in two games. But look at his numbers in the first eight games. Only 2.1 points per ball game in a very low clip from the field as well, only 21%. But in the last four games, is now 10 of uh, 10 points, point four points per ball game, and 54 percent from the field. So this guy is a big time player, and Dateneo needs him right now to give strength coming off the bench. All right, let's go now to the last year's runner-up, the De La Salle Green Archers. And when you talk about La Salle, the biggest story, at least for this week in the Final Four, is the fact that Mac Macardona has been injured from that game, that last game in the eliminations with the UE Warriors, so he will not be playing against Ateneo. That's definitely bad news. Well, Macardona is the leading scorer for his team and 17.9 points per ball game. In fact, the number one scorer in the league. And uh, even his uh, numbers on the percentage on uh, field goals, these are all respectable numbers, rebounds and steals. But what they're gonna miss in Macardona is his leadership. Every time this guy plays, chances are they're gonna go to him on the half-court sets and even on all the offensive options of LaSalle. But without him, then Coach Franz Tumarin will have problems where to go to on their offense. Well, during that game against UE, Cardona was injured early on in that game. And uh, the other players really had to step up. And one guy who stepped up big time is the rookie, Ryan Aranya. Well, he only had 6.4 points per ball game to talk about in the whole of uh, 13 games. But when they played University of the East, exploded for 24 points on a very scorching hot field to goal percentage of 10 of 12 or 83 percent so this guy coach france is also hoping that this guy can give up the same numbers as what he played against the uh, ue and uh, if he does that la salle will have a good chance of pulling off this one against ateneo de manila university well the ateneo de manila university have a twice to beat advantage against their arch rivals the de la salle green archers opening tip is coming up after a short break with the player intros brought to you by nescafe masarap na simula First up, coming all the way from Taft, lethal and always on target. Give it up for last year's runner-up, the De La Salle University Green Archers. This fifth-year player is one of the most underrated big men in the league at center, number six, Manny Ramos. Time and time again, this former saver, I stand out to save the day. At guard number eight, the ninja, Joseph Yo. He may be small, but size don't matter when you got guts. 
playing his second year at guard, 5'7", number 11, T.Y. Tang. Despite being a first-year player, this former PUB Santa plays like a veteran. That forward, 6'3", number 16, Jarwin Gakko. And this Greenhorn possesses the potential to be a solid contributor for the Archers. At guard, 6'1", number 20, Ryan Aranya. Head coach for the Archers is Franz Pumaren. And now soaring high above from the hills of Loyola Heights, ready to defend their title, the 2002 UAAP champions, your Antonio de Manila Blue Eagles. A former Red Cup, this slightly quick third year player, is one of the most exciting playmakers in the league. At guard, LA Tenorio. A two-time MVP, this former Kinnikai Santa is playing in his final campaign. Number 10, Rich Alvarez. A former UAAP Juniors MVP. He will forever be remembered for his defensive gems in last year's finals. At guard number 14, Larry Fonacher. Playing in his final season for the Eagles, he is one of the most versatile players on the hard court. Number 15, Wild, Wild, Wesley Gonzalez. And Mignus returns to the lineup after a knee injury sideline in last campaign. He'll swat shots away of opponents dare test him at center number 21, Paolo Bugia. Head coach for the Eagles in his second season is Joel Benal. So there you have it, our Nescafe starting five for both Ateneo and Lasal. Very familiar names. Even Ryan Aranya, the rookie, starting for Coach Franz Pumarin, based on last uh, Thursday's game, has been a household name, at least for the South fans. And that's it, last touch by Ateneo. It'll belong to the Green Archers. It might be a blessing in disguise also for the La Salle, because for uh, Coach Joel Banal, every time they play La Salle, they just have to prepare for Macardona. So since uh, Mac is not playing for this guy, there's no really one guy who can uh, take up the scoring battle for La Salle. So Baka Masina is now the report of Akane. Here's Joseph Kyo, the drive inside. The layup doesn't go inside, though. Aranya gets the offensive rebound and put back. Fair enough. This guy who scored 24 points against UE starting off early to score the first two points here in this ball game. They are denying the ball from L.A. Tenorio. Out to Gonzalez, open from the corner. Yes. So Wesley Gonzalez, a three-pointer. So effectively, it becomes a 4-4 four four play for the Salina Tenorio because Tam is not helping. He's just staying home on L.A. Tenorio. But a big shot from uh, Wesley Gonzalez. You saw it in the pregame earlier that every time these two teams meet, the Ateneo always shoots well from the three-point area. Yo inside the Gaco, hands it back to Joseph. Yo, yo, the fake, the shot. Four points now for Lasalle. They take the lead Lasalle, once again. Yo. So what is nice about the first two plays of Lasalle, these are all high percentage shots. They shot inside the paint. So a far cry from their dismal performance in the first two games where they were shooting a little over 30%. Here's Alvarez out to Ponacher from the baseline. Short of the jumper, rebound Aranya. Gives it to Tang. Lasalle, the lead in the ball. Tang on the right side, bounces into Ramos. Mounted by Alvarez, hands off to Yo. Yo against Monacher, gives it to Aranya. These two have to four uh, points for Lasal. Here's Yo, the drive inside, there's a whistle. And that's gonna be a foul on Tenorio. Let's go now to Hazel Aguilon for her first update on the Green Archers. Yesterday at practice, they asked Coach Ross how he felt when he found out that they were gonna be up against Ateneo in the final four. And he said it doesn't really make a difference because the bottom line is they have win two games in order to make it to the finals. Their backs are against the wall, and according to the coaches, one mistake, and that could be it for them this season. Everyone has to participate, whether it be playing or cheering on the bench. Most importantly, they have to be mentally tough. They have to want to win and live another day. Back to you, Jude and Ryan. Thank you very much, Hazel, for that update. And, uh, you know, their backs are against the wall. Just ask the UE Red Warriors. They lost today, and uh, they are going home for the rest of the season. Here's T.Y. Tang. Missing the 15-foot jumper, but the rebound right there from Jerwin Gakko. I like the aggressiveness of this white shirts of LaSalle. The players are really crashing the boards. Out of the four points, the first six points of LaSalle all came from a second chance opportunity, so the aggressiveness factor is on the side of LaSalle right now. The pass right to Joel Banal. The problem was he's not on the court. 
playing so far, so I mean, he was wearing blue, but not a uniform for Ateneo. Ateneo is a much talented team than the Sal right now because of the absence of Macardona. So the Sal is just doing it all on uh, the other aspects of the ball game. And what is significant here, the opening minute of the first quarter, is just the effort of this uh, La Sal players. They're crashing the boards and they're scoring on uh, second chance opportunities. This time, Alvarez gets the rebound off the miss. They give it to Gonzalez. Gonzalez, crossover move, picks up his dribble to Akari Alvarez, and he will be fouled by Manny Ramos. First personal foul will be called against uh, Manny Ramos and uh, Rich Alvarez. First time here to go to the 15-foot line as we take a look at that slow-mo coming off as a trailer. That's a trip by Gapo, so I think the foul is on Gapo, not Ramos. And there's a good look at uh, Mark Cardona, rookie of the year two years ago from Carson High School. So the Blue Eagles starting off slow here in the first quarter. They're down by three with 7.21 left in the first quarter. Alvarez missing both free throws. So Lasal with possession, left-handed drive against Monashere. Here's Gampo, the fake, the shot, the miss. Long rebound to Aranya. Aranya out to Tang. Tang for three. That's an air ball. And look at Aranya really hustled for that rebound. That's where he's going to get his points. The first two points earlier was because of the offensive rebound of Aranya. But right now, that was a way offline shot by uh, EY Tang. He has not scored the basket here, but definitely stayed up defense against Aranya. Mugia, 19 feet out, doesn't take the shot. Gives it to Alvarez against Aranya. Aranya bodies up on Alvarez. No call, and they finally call the foul on Ryan Aranya. His first personal against Ryan Aranya, and also the first, maybe the second team foul for uh, De La Salle University. So a quick change in the lineup of Coach Joel Banal is using two guards because in the opening minutes, L.A. Tenorio was at a factor because he's being hounded, he's being denied that basketball. So two guards early for Coach Joel. In comes Escalona for uh, Larry Funache. Well, Tenorio was open momentarily, took the shot, but short on the three-point attempt. This is Aranya, baseline drive, that handed layup doesn't go. Mugia gets the rebound, our score is still 6-3. Escalona pushing it up to Tenorio. Tenorio, hesitation move, gets past Aranya, baseline jumper, that's short as well. Long rebound to T.Y. Tang. Joteneo starting up cold here after that shot by Wesley Gonzalez. Ani Ramos, three-point area, gives it to Tang. Tang, hands off to Yo, Yo for three. Nice hand off play, T.Y. Tang to uh, Joseph Yo, and don't look now, De La Salle up to a big start. They're up by six points right now, nine to three. Escalona with the ball, guarded by Yo. Yo gives it to Gonzalez, 17 footer, and Gonzalez has all the points for the Blue Eagles. 9-5 is our score here in the first quarter with 5 minutes 50 seconds left. We do have a timeout, we'll be back. Back here at the Araneta Coliseum, enjoying the Ateneo La Salle game is PBA Commissioner Noli Ayala. And, uh, Last year, he enjoyed the final. That's Enrico Villanueva, last year's MVP. And uh, Congressman Edmund Reyes, also here, uh, cheering for Ateneo. So here we go, the Green Archers. Uh, here's our smart buddy prepaid matchup. Larry Ponacher and uh, Joseph Yo. Similar numbers, although Ponacher does have the advantage in the rebounding category. Yo, the drive against Gonzalez, actually that's Aranya getting past Wesley Gonzalez. Aranya! The offense of Lasal is good at this point because they're all spaced out. The four guys inside the floor can shoot from the outside and that left Aranya wide open for a penetration. And Lasal tried to make a stop with this play but uh, a blocking foul will be called against T.Y. Tang. T.Y. You know, Tang is sticking to L.A. Tenorio like a magnet like a leech there uh, with Tenorio, and they had some body contact off the ball, and the foul was called at time. That's why Coach Joel made an adjustment early here in the first quarter. He put in another point guard, so L.A. will slide down to the two-guard position, so Escalona can still run the offense, and Tenorio will be a shooter inside the lineup of Ateneo de Madrid. Here's Gonzalez, the lead jumper, and he has all seven points for the Blue Eagles. So it's five against one. Only uh, 
And Wesley Gonzalez is the lone bright spot on offense for Coach Joel Banal. Dan, Alfred Ramos, Ramos, Stinkle, gets past Alvarez. Uh, one shot doesn't go, but the rebound to Jerwin Gakko. And uh, the Green Archers have been out-rebounding uh, the Blue Eagles here in the first quarter. It's all going to be hard work for LaSalle to end up triumphant in today's ball game. So Ateneo should not rely on their uh, athleticism too much because at this point, when, again, emotions are high, it's always the more hard-working team who will eventually win this ball game. And at this point in the first quarter, it has been all De La Salle on both ends of the court. Well, this is a big development. L.A. Tenorio just picked up his second personal foul, which breaks Magno Confere off the bench. That ball is still loose. Battle for the loose ball. There's going to be a foul, and that's going to be on Ramos. Loose ball foul will be called against Manny Ramos, his first personal foul. And uh, Ateneo, once again, will get this possession back. Seven points of Ateneo. There's Only the reach. There's the push by Manny oh. Ramos. It's obvious that Manny Ramos will be called for that foul. Escalona. The ball inside. Well, outside to Bugia, who gets the first two points outside of Gonzalez for the Blue Eagles. And speaking of the Blue Eagles, Carmita Nutko is right on their bench to give us an update. The intensity of LaSalle's game can surely be felt. And Coach, Coach Joel Banal reminded the boys that they shouldn't just stand around and they should crash boards. The Blue Eagles did everything, they tried to eliminate all distractions in order to prepare for this game, oh, which is to study and oh. practice. That's back to you, boom, um, back to you guys. Thank you very much, Carmi. And Joseph Yo starting out hot here for the Green Archers. Here's Alvarez, the drive inside, gets a bump, and he'll have two free throws. Now, this is something Joseph Yo did very well, Ryan, at the beginning of season 66, is that he, he started the ball games and he got in rhythm early. And we got when he was relegated to uh, the bench as a sixth man, he kind of had a difficult time getting in rhythm, getting into the game. And this time, with Gaslona injured, I think he's getting the opportunity to start again. It looks like he's getting himself uh, in rhythm for the Green Archer. Well, that's correct in the first round, but in uh, La Salle ended with a 5 and 2 mark. Joseph Yu played a lot of minutes, but in the second round, maybe Coach uh, Francis had other things in mind. He uh, made Joseph Yu come off the bench, and uh, it proved to be ineffective for them. So right now, since again, you mentioned it, Macardona is not there. Joseph Yu will definitely get the minutes. He will be the primary option of offense, and this is responded positively for LaSalle. Casso missing the layup. Alvarez will push it up. He's got Ramos to beat, so he pulls back out. Out to Escalona. Escalona. Hesitation moves. Got it some crap in the air. Stolen by Casso, but he can't control it. And then sails out of bounds. Escalona, if he just looked at the rim, it was wide open after that great uh, crossover move, but he was looking for the extra pass. And right now, good thing for them, they will retain possession here. This time, Escalona <laughs> shoots from the baseline. That is not uh, it's all tied up at 13 with that shot by Escalona. Jaffer. Top of the key against Alvarez. Gives it to Yo. Yo, another three point attempt. This one doesn't go. Gonzalez gets the rebound. Ateneo looking for their first lead of the game. Actually, they led by one earlier. 3 to 2, but took to take it back. Gonzalez double bumps, and he draws the foul. Offensive minded is Wesley Gonzalez. He started the game early with uh, a booming three point shot in the corner. And right now, since the defense is uh, pretty much like a phone booth, he opted to penetrate. He was not able to make this shot right here, but he will go to the line to shoot two baskets and an opportunity for him to increase his output to nine points depending on this two three points. Aranya will sit. Kabatu will enter the ball game. Benitez also replaces Ramos. Gonzalez will have two free throws. He makes one. Uh, he will take the lead, which he does. That's Renvan de Guallo in the lower box section watching this game. Wishing that he could contribute to the LaSalle pause. Gonzalez, two for two from the free throw line. So Ateneo now has their biggest lead in the game at two. 13 our score. Abato with the ball actually against Gakko now. Against Alvarez. Gakko hands off to Yo. Yo gets a screen, still has it on the left side. Bounces into Benitez. Hands back to Yo. They do the read. 
Alcy Joseph Yo with two on the shot clock. A for three. That's way off, and it'll be a turnover for Lasalle. In case of uh... Andy Howe is also here. He is the gen uh, team manager <laughs> of Red Bull uh, Baraco and a fellow sportscaster. And we'd like to remind everyone that, uh, that, that uh, to show your school spirit, to download the Final 14 SMS logos and MMS wallpapers for SMS logos, text logo space ATMU or logo space DLSU 22366. For MMS wallpapers, just text MMS 22366. And another shot to go in for Wesley Gonzalez. Really? He's got 12 now on the 18 Ateneo points. His scorching is definitely wild here in the first quarter. He's just had to take 12 points, 4 points for Paul Cage the whole season. But right now, only in the first quarter, he has exploded for 12 points. Here's Jason Shaw. Jay Shaw getting the two points, banking it in for the Green Archers. So Alvarez brings it up. Looks like LaSalle is not implementing their full court pressure. Inside they go, stolen by Yo. Joseph Yo loses control, but Benitez right there to recover. It's now Casho, cross court to Yo. Yo, the drive, challenges Bogia, gets the bump, gets the basket, and he's gonna get two or one free throw to complete a three point play. That's just great upper body strength and tremendous elevation for Joseph Yo. Take a look at the slow mo. He opted to make that two dribble and then trying to attack the defense of Mugia. He was going down just before he took that shot and one opportunity for Joseph Yo. And uh, a great chance for him to tie this uh, down at 18 points, depending on this uh, free throw that will be given to him. Well, you know, Joseph Yo needed to hold on to that ball because if he would have shot that at uh, the top of his jump, he would have been blocked as Wesley Gonzalez completes this lift and ice tee. Three-point shot, and uh, yeah, beneath it, talaga sa ere, kasi kita niya kung na kumawaan na siya, bakit niya tinira. So Yo completes the three-point play, and uh, Joseph Yo matching uh, Wesley Gonzalez here. In terms of offensive output, I mean, he doesn't have 12 points yet, but he's got 10. So both of them already in double digits with the first quarter not over yet. It's just a great uh, matchup between these two players. Joseph Yo starting off hot here for La Salle and uh, Wesley Gonzalez. But right now, De La Salle University is in team foul uh, penalty already. A total of seven fouls hold against them. So will be given to Rich Alvarez. Alvarez, a 60% shooter from the free throw line. He missed his two free throws earlier on the initial trip. And uh, he will try again. 8.8 rebounds for ball game. And he made sure it's the first one. Well, by the way, in terms of statistical uh, leaders uh, for the MVP race, which is uh, going to be 50% of uh, who the MVP will be. Uh, Rich Alvarez uh, is among four Ateneo players in the top ten. And the Magna Cardona is the number one player right now. But of course, we still have the voting and then other factors. And we'll go into it. No, out to Aquino. Aquino, the drive. And they are really attacking this Ateneo defense. In most of their shots, uh, outside of Yo's uh, outside jumpers, has been going to the basket, attacking the team in blue. They're just very aggressive uh, attacking that uh, rim and that Ineo should uh, do a good job sliding with their respective men. But what is nice about this Casal team right now is that their offense is unpredictable. Unlike when they have a Bacardona, where they're going to make two or three passes and eventually the ball will end up in the hands of Bacardona. But right now, among the five players here for Lasalle, you don't know who's going to take the shot. And Ateneo is not ready to play defense on all those players who are trying to attack that pass. Here's Rich Alvarez taking it all the way to the basket, and he'll be fouled in his drive by Mark Benitez. Something has to give. If you play defense just like that, LaSalle is more susceptible to committing a lot of fouls. And uh, once again, too close for Bumford was the defense of Benitez. So another free throw to that is going to be given to Rich Alvarez. He made the necessary adjustments in his last trip. He made two straight free throws, but right now, he's now two out of five from the free throw line. You know, he's just not missing free throws. He's missing them badly. <laughs> Way of life. You know, yeah. Those never have a chance. The ones he's missed. And he's 25 right now. Let's see if he can get to 50 percent here, which he does. So we're all tied up at 21 with a minute 12 left here in the first quarter. Ashok, 14. Benitez. Joseph 
Jones, or Buddy Marshall. Marshall gets a screen, goes inside. He's winner, in and out. That ball goes to Kabatu's hands. Inside they go. Here's Aquino once again. No the pass. Pulled even his teammate, Mark Benitez. Aquino had the right intention. He saw two men collapsing on him. So he made that nice pass to uh, Benitez, but Benitez was just not up to it. So still, we're all tied up at 21-all that time left in the first quarter. Casal gets another steal. Off the bad pass by Rich Alvarez. Here's Joseph Yo, hands off to Aquino. Again, they do the weave. This is Lacasso, and Aquino commits the offensive foul off the screen. As soon as he handed it off, that's a moving screen as he ran into Larry Punasher. So missed opportunity once again for Lasalle, but what is uh, obvious here for Lasalle is just they're moving the ball left to right, so the defense of Ateneo is now caught guessing. They cannot get their help side defense on. That's why a lot of penetrations were available for Lasalle here in the first quarter. Again, Ateneo has the ball. We're still tied at 21. Here's Gonzalez once again. He's been hot for the Blue Eagles. Gonzalez inside, fakes, fakes again. Except for Raymond, nothing there. He leads in, and Wesley Gonzalez is in the zone for the Blue Eagles. He's got 14 points already here in the first quarter. Ryan Aranya inside, and he caught the Ateneo defense snapping there on their transition uh, play. Good primary break for Aranya. He was not afraid to take that shot, and that is what Coach Franz Lumarin wants. He thinks that Ateneo is such a good defensive team on the half court, so they want to push the ball and score early. Rich Alvarez inside, no foul ball, and Benitez gets the rebound as time expires here in the first quarter. So we've played 10 minutes, and we are all set to zero once again. 23-23, we're all tied up here at the Adonetta Coliseum. It's Ateneo versus LaSalle. We'll be back with the second quarter after a few messages. Welcome back to UAAP Final Four here in Season 66. And the Pumarin clan, uh, Derek Kandindo Pumarin, right here. And that's a familiar face uh, if you're a uh, UConn fan. Uh, that was Scott Perel, by the way. And uh, right in the middle of the pack there, right by brother Bernie Oka, was uh, Robin De Rosa as well. And uh, Secretary Dick Gordon also here to enjoy the Ateneo LaSalle matchup. And, uh, in terms of field goal uh, percentage, Ateneo continuing to shoot really well, but LaSalle shooting almost twice as many field goal attempts as the Blue Eagles. LaSalle had a lot of opportunities. They were getting loose balls, they were getting offensive rebounds, but uh, the rebounding, that's exactly the point that I was raising. 11 rebounds for De LaSalle and only six for Ateneo. But for LaSalle, somebody has to stop the rampaging Wesley Gonzalez. Wesley already has 40 points out of the 23 of Ateneo. Rich Alvarez traveled before he made that move. Turnover in the first play for Ateneo. A chance for LaSalle to grab the upper hand once again. And there's opportunity. So uh, without Bacardon, at least in the first quarter, LaSalle playing great basketball. They're able to uh, tie Ateneo's output at 23 points. Benny gets against Kramer. Hands off to Aranya. Aranya, left-handed drive. Out to Casho. Casho for three. That's an air ball, but Aranya able to sneak in once again for the Green Archers for their offensive rebound and putback. Good things will happen to a person who really works hard and does not give up on the ball. Aranya once again at the right place at the right time for that offensive rebound and putback. But once again, Ateneo finding the right answer. Uh, Larry Funasher with a booming three-point shot. But Larry Ponacher always shoots well, has shot well the last two games that uh, Ateneo played against LaSalle. Gonzalez getting the rebound here, giving it to Ponacher. Ponacher makes his move, cross over against Casho, gives it to Kramer, and he will be fouled going to the basket. Here's a look at nice D three-point shot. Larry Ponacher, no hesitation, former UAAP MVP in the juniors division for the Ateneo High School. And he is one of the four who is in the top 10 in that uh, MVP statistical race. And he likes this venue. Of course, the first two games when these two teams met, they were they played the game here in the Araneta Coliseum. And uh, going back to our numbers earlier for Dari for the share, he's shooting 83% from the three-point area. So shots like those are pretty much familiar occasions for Dari for the share. <laughs> uh, Doug Kramer missing the first free throw. Welcome again, everyone. Welcome, Philippines. 
if you just uh, coming off of work or going uh, home early from work. So you can catch a little bit of the, the Ateneo LaSalle matchup here in Studio 23. Welcome. It's a very close matchup. Ateneo up by one, 26 25. Inside we go. Aranya, he's got eight already. Out to Kamatu for three. Misses this one, but the long rebound goes to Ramos. And he'll set it up once again. Rasho, left side, out to Ramos against Pugia. Aranya with the ball. Out to Casso. Casso against Tenorio, and he gets his pocket pick by Tenorio. Here comes Ateneo. Tenorio with the ball. Challenges Aquino, and he'll draw the foul. It's just a matter of time for El a Tenorio to score. He was not able to shoot or to score in the first quarter, but uh, he has that uncanny ability to draw foul. And uh, he was fouled on the way for that uh, layup shot and two free throws once again. This time for LA Tenorio. Ateneo has gone to the line a couple of times, but this the, that the offensive set was started because of this great defensive gem by LA Tenorio. Well, that was brought to you by Rexona, your best defense against odor and wetness. LA Tenorio getting his first points here in the game, and it's in the second quarter. And, uh, you know, Tenorio relegated to a cheerleader for the Green Archers, at least for this ball game. Hitting both free throws, and uh, guess who's back in the game? T.Y. Tang, the guy who denied L.A. Tenorio the ball in the first quarter. Tang, his pass tipped away, taken by Ramos. Ramos uh, drives against Mugia. Ramos, spin move, missing the shot. Faber almost got the rebound, but then Tenorio has it. L.A. Tenorio with the ball, drives against Tang. Out to Del Rosario. Del Rosario for three, that's short. Aranya gets the rebound. Lasal up and running on the other end. Lee Castro, cross court to P.Y. Tang. Tang with the ball. They'll get a screen from Kabatu. Tang, crossover move inside. P.Y. Tang out to Ramos. Ramos back to Castro. Seven on the shot clock. Castro out to Tang. And Castro traveled before he passed it to T.Y. Tang. Tentative offense for uh, LaSalle. They don't know where to go to, and uh, as a result, they turn the ball over. So uh, Ateneo doing a good job defensively. They have not given LaSalle a good uh, look at the basket here in the second quarter. A three point lead for the Blue Eagles. The Rosario up top and injury with the ball against Casha. The Rosario baseline drive. His pass stolen by Cavatu. So Tang will walk it up. Chance to cut into this lead. Aranya out to Kabatu against Kramer. Kabatu with the ball, hands off to Tang. Out to Kasho for the tie. Doesn't go for the share. Gets the rebound. Guateneo with possession once again. Trying to extend on the lead. Tenorio, I mean, he's done that many times here in the UAAP. Here's for the share. Hesitation move inside. Hands in the air. Missing the shot. Ramos gets the rebound. Bonasal. With the ball once again, the both teams exchanging missed shots here with both possessions. Kabatu, back to Tang. Tang left open for the three-point area. Castro will shoot it for the three-point area, and he will hit to tie the ball game at 28. It's just perseverance for uh, JB Kasha, and he was not afraid to take that shot. He missed initially on that same spot, but the second time around, he made sure 28 all. We're again on a deadlock with 6 and 19 remaining here in the second. Here's Mugia from the baseline, guarded by Kabatu. Makes his move, double team by Kasho. Kramer, 15-footer. That's the shot that big guy should have, that uh, short jumpers and Kramer. He saw that defense of Manny Ramos collapse early, so uh, that was just a good shot and a high percentage shot for Don Kramer. Sal once again, trying to tie the ball game. Ramos with the ball, ahead for Kabatu. Kabatu drives against Kramer, and again, he gets his pocket pick by L.A. Tenorio. Two on one fast break, and there's a foul from J.V. Jaysha Kasho. Those are playoff fouls. No end ones, and uh, he was after that ball. No intention to hurt Baji Del Rosario, but Baji should really earn it. LaSalle, again, should need two wins to make it to the playoffs. L.A. The Tenorio, suki na ng Rexona, pangalawang uh, steal. The L.A. Tenorio brought to you by Rexona, your best defense against odor and wetness. We'll be back. We have a timeout. So from the former commissioner to our current commissioner, uh, they're very interested in what's happening in the UAV. Obaji Del Rosario, 
one of the many players from the Ateneo team who came from the high school as well. But you also missed a lot of games due to uh, injuries. But uh, right now, the main task of Bajio, of course, is to play defense against Josefio. And those are bonus points for him. But Bajio can uh, shoot from the outside too. So if he starts shooting from the outside, I might pull his face up for Ateneo. During that matchup, Yo against Del Rosario. Del Rosario falls on the ground. Yo misses the layup. This follow doesn't go. Rebound inside. Tapa still can't make it. So Tenorio has the ball. Three on three fast break. Tenorio gets around T.Y. Tang, who commits the foul. So Tenorio is pushing the ball every time he gets that possession and uh, a lot of opening for that Ateneo offense every time he does that. But this time, T.Y. Tang will be called for a second personal foul and just a fourth team foul for LaSalle. So the next foul will merit two free throws for Ateneo. This is one aspect, again, wherein LaSalle had problems as we take a look at uh, the winning coach earlier, Coach Koi Banal, who will uh, be waiting for his opponent. Of course, his FEU team will march to the finals because of their victory against UE. And Gerard Jones was the best player in that game. Here's Del Rosario, his pass inside. Good dish to Larry Perasier. So again, good uh, drive and draw for uh, Bajir Del Rosario and that left hand in the chair wide open underneath that basket. Ateneo, their biggest lead at the moment at six points, 34 to 28. There. Spin move inside, had to pick up his dribble, gives it to Yo, nine on the shot clock. Yo, the drive against Del Rosario, nothing there, and another steal for L.A. Tenorio, all the way to the basket for two points. L.A. Tenorio, three steals in the ball game, resulting for positive points for the Blue Eagles. He knows, he knows that he's a marked man every time they play the half-court set for him to score. He has a great turnovers and get a lot of loose balls. And again, a speed and a completed one for L.A. Tenorio. Ani Ramos runs into Bachi Del Rosario, and that's going to be a blocking foul on Del Rosario. Let's go back to Hazel Aguilon for her second update on the Green Archers. Today is D.Y. Dan's birthday, and a win would certainly make it a happy day for him. Standing around and walking, it's seems to be a mortal sin for the Green Archers because they always have to be very active and they have to push the ball at all times. Now on defense, they have to contain the starters of Ateneo and shut down the players coming off the bench. They have to make Ateneo bleed for every point. Back to you, Jordan Ryan. Thank you very much, Hazel. And happy birthday to D.Y. Tang. You know, I, I knew it was his birthday, but I was waiting for a nice play from D.Y. before I, uh, I greet him happy birthday. But I'm sure it'll come. Now another steal here for Ateneo. Tenore with the ball. Puts on the brakes. Tenorio gives it to Ponacher. Guarded by Yo. Ponacher inside. This is our uh, smart buddy prepaid matchup, by the way. And uh, that ball sails out of bounds. And it's last touch by Ateneo. I thought Yo touched it from behind. Here's that Milo amazing pass break. Eli Tenorio getting the two points here for our Milo amazing pass break. But uh, back to live action. We're going to reverse the call. That's a good call by the referees because when Ponacher drove, Yo reached in from behind and tipped it out of bounds. And uh, that's, in fact, that's why T.Y. Tang went for the ball because he knew Yo tipped it out. And uh, you know, that's a good call by the referees to reverse the ball just to make sure it's the right call. That's right. There's only one right call and uh, we have to talk about it. And this time, Ateneo once again flashing the boards this time. But... Um, about to said enough is enough. La Salle down by eight points at the moment, and nothing is going right with their offense. And LA Tenorio has four steals already here in the second quarter. Gapo against Kramer. Baseline drive inside, runs out of real estate, and he stepped out of bounds. And if he didn't step out of bounds, Tenorio would have gotten his fifth steal here in the first half. LA is just quick to the ball. He has great anticipation. He knows where the ball is going to land. And if, if it's a uh, an opportunity for him to grab that loose ball, he's going to get it. But Rasal right now is uh, having problems with their offense once again. And Ateneo is just easy. They're pushing the ball. They're making uh, the help side defense collapse to that guy who's driving. And in the last second, that guy who's driving will just dish off a nice bounce, uh, drop pass. Two instances already for that easy shot from an Ateneo player. And right now, this is the biggest lead of Ateneo once again. But answered back right away by Joseph Yo. Seven points. The well, Joseph Yo now with 13 in the ball game, and he has been the star of the show for the Green Archers. L.A. Tenorio, his pass cannot be handled 
by Doug Kramer, but L.A. Tenorio has been all over the place for Coach Joel Banal. And uh, here's Joseph Yo with a lift and ice tee three-point shot, his second of the ball game. And uh, the legend. He's coached at the nail before, I believe. Uh, early 90s or early 80s. Uh, and there's Vitos Valdez from uh, Studio 23. That was Baby the Lupan, by the way, just before that. They have all skipped work today <laughs> to watch Ateneo Lasal. And this is round number three. Lasal hoping to go to round number four on Saturday. Ateneo hoping to finish the season series here today, Thursday afternoon. Del Rosario with the ball, gives it to Gonzalez. Gonzalez, a good pass inside to Rich Alvarez, but he will be fouled before he got the shot off. Ateneo is just doing the right thing. As soon as somebody gets the ball on this particular situation, of course, Batito and Rosario just push the ball and hope for uh, a good shot by Ateneo. And since Wesley Gonzalez is a marked man, once he got that ball, the defense collapsed to him, and that left Alvarez open underneath. So no, no choice for a DLS player but to foul him. Rich Alvarez struggling a little from the free throw line, but uh, slowly getting his group back. Six points for Rich, all scored from the free throw area in Ateneo. Now on top by eight points, six out of nine from the free throw area for Rich Alvarez. Make it seven of ten for a 70% flip. And a good nine point lead once again for Ateneo here in the second point. Uh, Alvarez has recovered nicely from uh, a bad strike from the free throw area. Here's Joseph Yo, hands off to Kabati. They do the weave once again. T.Y. Tan from the three point area, and that's off left. Puguia gets the rebound. So Ateneo, chance to extend this lead with this possession once again. L.A. Tenorio against T.Y. Tan. Tenorio gets past Tan, gets past everybody, but missed the layup. Tan pushing it up for Lasalle. Gives it to Cabati. Less than two minutes left here in the first half. Benitez against Bugia. Benitez spins against Bugia. His pass tipped away. And it will stay with Lasalle. What is nice about Latine here in the second quarter is that their defense is stepped up. Early on in the first quarter, when Lasalle took the shot from the outside and they missed, another Lasalle player will get the rebound. But right now, only one opportunity for Lasalle to score on their basket because Ateneo is doing a good job on the defensive rebounding end. Joe wants to go inside, gives it to Benitez. Benitez makes his move against Mugia. Tough shot, doesn't go. Battle for the loose ball. Rebound was with Gonzalez, but a foul will be called. Maki Escalona. And that's his teammate, I think, uh, getting a little bit too much contact on that play. Let's go now to Carly Tanuto for her second update on Ateneo. The intensity can surely be felt in the huddle as no one uttered a word while Coach Joel advised his big men to stay low. But Gina Rosario, meanwhile, stayed a bloody knee, but it doesn't seem to be to affect his playing. Now back to you, Jude and Ryan. Uh, but Gideon Rosario, uh, I think uh, he sustained that injury, or not the injury, but uh, that. Uh, well, as we take a look at the foul by Rich Alvarez against Jerwin Gapo, but he sustained that bloody knee from uh, his defense against Joseph Yo at one time. If you recall, he did fall to the ground, and I think he scratched his knee against the floor. Gapo misses first. Uh free throw. He's one of the better free throw shooters for the Green Archers, actually. Erwin Gakko, of course, after I say that, missing both free throws <laughs> for LaSalle. Escalona gives it to Alvarez. Alvarez hounded by Gatsalian. Alvarez drives against Gatsalian. Hands off to Bugia. Gonzalez, the drive against Capato inside. Missing the shot, gets his own shot with the rebound, but he did push off to get it. A different kind of defense was uh, employed by LaSalle. All of a sudden, they went to a 2-3 zone. It was a good penetration by Wesley Gonzalez. Even if he missed that shot, that's the right way to break that zone. Defense tried to attack the defense and look for the gaps. Unfortunately, on the offensive rebound, he was called for a foul, but not yet in the penalty. His Ateneo, that was only their fourth team foul. Jaco, and off to Cavalli. 
Kabatu left side against Gonzalez. They want the lead once again. They hand it off to Yo. Kabatu to drive inside. Hesitation move for the shot clock. They gotta shoot it. Joseph Yo forces up the three, and that's gonna be too late for the Green Archers, and that's not gonna count. So Lazar, I think, spending a little bit too much time in the perimeter area, handing off and doing that weave, and all of a sudden they find themselves with three or four seconds left in the shot clock and has to force up a shot. Well, in the first quarter, they were effective because in the third or the fourth uh, pass, they're looking for that attack. But right now, they're playing passive offense. They're looking for that jump shot of that penetration, so they're not effective, at least in the last four possessions. Ito ang uh, Lazario na person. Here's Escalona, trying to split the defense. Finds Del Rosario, open for three. Short at the jumper, rebound to Chalian, and he'll be called for the foul. Using his off arm, I guess, to box out and ward off Larry for the share. And that's not smart at all for uh, Chalian because that will definitely be a loose ball foul and uh, Lasal is in red in the penalty. So two free throws will be given to Larry for the share. Not the best man to foul at this point because for the share is deadly from uh, the free throw line. So I can see up for the build up by nine points right now, 40 to 31, top time left to the second quarter. And uh, another chance or two chances for Wesley. We don't see it a lot of times that Wesley with his free throws in the first drive. For sure, he's gonna make it and he made it. Larry for the share already with uh, six points. Make it seven and the biggest lead they enjoyed by Ateneo. 11 point lead for them on 14 to 31. need of some offense here. Cabano against Bonacher. Gives it to Joseph Yo. There's a six second difference between shot and game clock. Cabano kind of wants to clear out here. Gives it back to Yo. Again, there's only four in the shot clock as Joseph Casho missing the jumper. But the offensive rebound goes to Cabano and he hits the outside jumper, and that will be a three-point shot for the Green Archers, and that just uh, in just in time, a much-needed three-point shot for the Green Archers to cut into this double-digit lead of Ateneo. 42-34, our halftime score here. The lead of the Blue Eagles cut to eight because of this jumper from Junjun Kabatu, a three-pointer that cuts the lead to eight points after 20 minutes of play. Here at the Araneta Coliseum, 42-34, our halftime score. We'll be back with our Nestle non-stop cheering exhibition after these. So far, although LaSalle had good offense and uh, good road, uh, actually good uh, motion offense uh, during the first quarter, Ateneo has answered the call and uh, still leads by eight points. Well, Ateneo was a different team in the second quarter. At the end of the first quarter, we're all tied up at 23 points apiece, but in the second quarter, Ateneo exploded for 19 points and limiting De La Salle to only 11. So defense stepping up for Ateneo in the second quarter and also they scored a lot of transition baskets as well. Well, let's take a look at the numbers for both Ateneo and La Salle to see exactly what Ateneo has to do or uh, what La Salle has to do to catch up. Well, the problem with uh, La Salle was their field goal percentage once again. They, they shot only 35% from the field as compared to that uh, 12 of 25 to 48% for Ateneo. But the problem really are the easy shots that Ateneo took from the free throw line. A total of 16 fouls were called against the LSU and Ateneo shot 20 or 15 of 20 from uh, the free throw area and only four baskets for uh, La Salle. They just got two from the free throw while the turnover point, 17 for Ateneo and only five from La Salle. But the story again in the second quarter aside from the free throws were the fast break points. A total of nine fast break points for Ateneo and zero for De La Salle. So if you take out the, the steals of L.A. Tenorio, they, La Salle actually is turnover free. That's correct. Well, <laughs> for uh, La Salle, they turned the ball over 12 times here in the first two quarters, and that's a lot. And Ateneo only accounting for seven turnovers. But again, the easy baskets, the free throws, and the transition points. While the scoring leaders, Wesley Gonzalez exploding for 14 points in the first quarter alone. But... Uh, they have a lot of uh, scores aside from uh, Gonzalez. Alvarez with seven, Bonacher with seven, and Tenorio four, for, while for DLSU, 13 for Yo, Aranya eight, Cacho five, and Cabato three. So uh, the scoring uh, attack of Ateneo, well balanced at this point. So will this be the final 20 minutes of the Green Archers of La Salle, or will they live another game for this Saturday? So seconds away from the second half tip-off. It's Ramos against Bugia, won by Ateneo. 
Here's Gonzalez making the three inside the goal. Mugia hounded by Gapo right there. Gonzalez shoots the three, and that's a little long. The bounce goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Green Archers. Tenorio will inbound. Same starting lineups here for both teams. Start the second half. Tenorio still looking. Out to Gonzalez. Fresh 24 second shot clock. Gonzalez against Joe. Inside to Bonacher. Bonacher takes a three pointer. Air ball. Aranya gets the long rebound. Pushes it up for the Green Archers. Chance to cut it to six with a field goal. Y tag out to Joseph Yo. Yo guarded by Gonzalez. Joseph Yo still has it. The two leading scorers in the ball game at it against each other. Seven on the shot clock. Inside they go from the baseline, and Jerwin Gakko loses it out of bounds. Well, the defense definitely is stepping up for Ateneo in the second quarter. And right now, they're starting with that with tremendous pressure once again. And look at this one-on-one -on -one, uh, defense of Bugia. He did not use his arms. He fouled uh, Gako. He just moved his legs. And as a result, he came with a turnover. So again, an opportunity for Ateneo to increase their eight-point lead. On the corner once again, the try by Wesley Gonzalez. Well defended by the Green Archers. Jerwin Gako right there to help. Still, no score here in the second half. Over a minute has gone by. Dy Tang looking for the open man and finds Manny Ramos. Again, the shot clock running down for Lasal. Aranya with the ball, four on the shot clock. They're gonna have to get it up. Tang for three. That's short. And rebound Gonzalez. Gonzalez ahead to the but of a Dy Tang back on defense to get the steal. Joseph Yo, crossover move, ball the way to the basket, there's a whistle, and that's going to be a foul. Is that going to be on Gonzalez? That's number three on Wesley Gonzalez. But this is exactly the thing that Joseph Yo did in the first quarter. Instead of pulling up with those uh, outside shots, now he's attacking the basket once again. Not only will he be able to increase that percentage of... Uh, LaSalle, which was like only 35% in the first two quarters. The other thing that will make that kind of a shot uh, important for LaSalle is that they will go to the free throw a lot of times, but unfortunately for Joseph Kyo, he misses first free throw. But uh, again, the numbers in the free throw, 15 of 20 for Ateneo and 24 attempts from LaSalle for a good 50% for them. But right now, Joseph Kyo making sure of the second one, and the lead goes down to seven points. Still, Ateneo on top, 42 to 35. That's only the first point here for both teams in the second half. Let's go now to Hazel Aguilon for an update on LaSalle. At the half, Coach Franz Marin has his voice to play watch the Discovery Channel. He said that once being attacked are the ones who look scared out there. So they can't look scared, they have to stay tough. Also, he said we are still in this game. All they have to do is exert extra effort. They have to play heads up basketball for the next 20 minutes. And above all, they have to believe in themselves and believe that they can beat at the nail. Back to you, Jesus Ryan. Thanks, Hazel. And uh, you know, Ryan, uh, you're a coach. Uh, you know that a lot of... Uh, success in basketball depends on your psychological outlook. And uh, yun nga, sabi ni Coach Franz Kumarin, you cannot look scared out there because you're just going to give Ateneo more confidence when they do attack on their offense. Well, in the second quarter, they get, again look scared, but that was not the, the look that they had in the opening minute or even in the whole of the first quarter because they were not scared to attack that basket. So again, in the halftime break, Coach Franz Kumarin just simply told his boys, because uh, if you attack that basket a lot of times, chances are Ateneo will be ready for that, will not be ready for that defense, and you might just get a foul. You know, look at the Discovery Channel. Yes, yes. My coaches yata yun ang gusto. Let's go now to Carmi Tanuto on the other side for her update on Ateneo. In the locker room, Coach Joel was very technical but still inspiring. He told his boys to enjoy the game and told his big men to outwork their DLSU counterparts. Now back to you, Jude and Ryan. Thanks, Carmi. You know, that's a good point, Ryan. Uh, the rebounding of Ateneo certainly is not where it needs to be as Joseph Yo goes inside. The fake, the shot blocked away by Paulo Mugia. And that ball will go out of bounds. And that's a technical foul on Del Rosario. And the, uh, it looks like it is a technical foul on Ateneo. Well, again, the emotions will be uh, very high he threw, every time these two teams meet. I think he threw the ball at Aranya. Uh, but it was to hit it out of bounds, I think. Or Joseph Yo. Yeah, he hit it off Joseph Yo just so that the ball will go off 
Joseph Yo, and I guess the referee thought that he was trying to hit the head of uh, of Yo. Well, anytime it is above the shoulder, the referees will deem it as a uh, okay. technical foul. So uh, again, it's not the intention of Pajid Del Rosario. He was just saving that ball possession for Ateneo, but it came right above the shoulder of Joseph Yo. As a result, Ki White Tang will troop to the free throw line to take this free throw yeah, shot. It, it did hit the top of uh, Yo's shoulder. Which I guess the ruling is, yes. if it's above the shoulder, it's a technical foul. And T.Y. Tang, our birthday boy, hits the technical free throw. Well, T.Y. needs to get his offensive game going. He has not scored yet prior to that shot, so that might increase his confidence level. De La Salle still down by 8 points, 44 to 36. But La Salle will gain that possession back because of the tech on uh, Bajir Del Rosario. And, uh, well, again, going back to the point of Coach Franz, if you take that shot a lot of times from the outside, you're not really helping your offense because that's easy. That's the easiest way out. Take that shot from the outside. Yo, from the corner. Good give and go play. And Joseph Yo, left handed layup. I mean, this guy is a real, I mean, he's PBA caliber, I mean, in my opinion. Well, he can beat you in more ways than one. He can shoot those pull-up jumpers. He can break that defense with his penetration. And that was just a good give and go play between T.Y. Uh, Tang and Joseph Yo. Cross court they go. Del Rosario double team right away. Alvarez with three on the shot clock. Here's Del Rosario. They're going to have to bring him and shoot it up. And they run out of time here with 7.05 left. The lead is six for the Blue Eagles. T.Y. Tang will walk it up for La Salle. Again, looking for some points here to cut into this lead. Tang with the ball. Goes on the left side. Looking for Gago. Instead goes to Ramos. Ramos inside to Araña. Araña, left-handed stab. Doesn't go. Alvarez gets the rebound. Ahead to Tenorio. The three white shirts back on defense. Tenorio doesn't care. Shoots anyway. Long rebound to T.Y. Tang. Tang with the ball. Puts on the brakes. As he sees a lot of blue shirts back on defense. Ramos out to Joseph Yo. Tang open for three. Instead goes baseline. The two pointer bounces in. Shooter's stuck for T.Y. Tang. That's exactly the point for him on. Coach Franz wanted T.Y. Tang to be involved on the offense again after that free throw. His confidence level boosts up. And right now, T.Y. Tang already with three points. And more importantly, just a four point lead deficit for uh, Atene or for La Salle. That's the, what they're catching up right now. Here's Larry for the share. Another tough shot and another miss. Lasalle has a chance to cut it to two here. The momentum has shifted to the Green Archer side. Yo with the ball, gets a screen, out to Araña. 12 on the shot clock, inside to Manny Ramos. Manny Ramos, double team inside. And the ball is a traveling violation on the veteran. With five minutes and 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. Coach Franz Pumanen has called the timeout. Point pressure for Lasal. Chris Chu, the other rookie from uh, from Xavier High School, also in the game. Here's Rich Alvarez blocked away, and that's going to be the uh, Ateneo ball as he was triple team. 11 seconds of the shot clock of Ateneo, so that's uh, probably one of the adjustments of Coach Franz. Great tough defense without fouling, so that was a good defensive. Uh, Right there for Lasal and trying to point that shot of Alvarez. Larry for the share, Jeff Morgan for three, and he cannot do that. Larry for the share, he had all day to buy up that three point shot. Joseph Joe, ball to play for Lasal, the lead is back up to seven. Go with the ball again, they melt the shot clock here. Maybe Basho out to Yo to answer back. Doesn't do it, Mark Rebound goes back to Yo. Yo with the ball, drives baseline. Nothing there, no. Aranya, again, they got the block. But Tenorio, the best defender that he is, is causing havoc here for the LaSalle offense. Yo with the ball, dragged his pivot foot, and uh, that was caused by the challenge defense of Rich Alvarez. It was just great close-out defense by Rich Alvarez, and uh, Joseph Yo did not want, uh, did not know what to do at that particular uh, situation. Ateneo, because of that three-point shot in Paris, again up by seven points. Ateneo looking good thus far here in the third quarter. Shot from the outside, 
inside and so is not for the chair. So you just don't look at it. And you don't uh, swat it like a fly. You have to put the hand up and force it to put the ball down. That was just a great three-point shot by, the, uh, by uh, L.A. Tenorio. As always, brought to you by Lipton, the official ice team of the UAAP. You can see it too many times. They've seen it too many times. Yes. It's, it's hard to believe that they're actually not challenging the shots. Joseph Yo out to Cabato. Cabato drives against Chris Chu. Out to Yo. Out to Cabato from, from the three point area. But a shell cannot handle the rebound though. But again, the De La Salle Archers is holding on to that ball in the perimeter and then waiting. For, there's about uh, you know seven, eight seconds left in the shot clock, which is the case now. There's only eight seconds on the shot clock. And they give themselves very little time to get a shot off. Here's Yo inside, gets a bump, no call, double team, inside once again, and Joseph Yo doing everything he can to keep the Green Archers in the game. It does not want Lasalle to be, well, this is not the, should be the last game for Lasalle, and that is the mindset of Joseph Yo right now. If it's going to be a one-man wrecking crew, it's willing to do the job. Joseph already with 20 points out of the 44 of Lasalle. Again, Tenorio all day to look at that shot, I and mean, he's going to make that about half the time. Denorio makes the three, but they do have a fresh 24-second shot clock, so they're going to take their time here. Alvarez back to Denorio, inside to Bugia. Bugia against Ramos, three-point area. Back to Alvarez, he shoots a three-pointer, that's a brick. But Chris Chu gets the offensive rebound, and Ateneo getting the rebounds now on offense. The share inside they go, stripped by Casho. Three on one fast break. Casho, ahead to Cabano, back to Joseph Yo. Savior versus Savior. And Yo gets it with two points. The lead is down to four points once again here for Ateneo as the Green Archers have regained momentum in the third quarter with two minutes 54 left. Coach Joel Van Alstern to call a timeout. And that's Mori Udanis, SVP for uh, TV programming for ABS CBN uh, enjoying this game. She's wearing blue. Here's the steal by JV Casho to complete the Milo amazing Born fast break. Three on one fast yeah. break completed by Joseph Yo of the Green Archers. He's got 22 points for our Milo amazing fast break. And uh, Secretary Mar Rojas also here. And he's enjoying, and uh, there's a lot of blue around his area. Here's Rich Alvarez blocked from behind, but a foul will be called on Jerwin Gakko. So wise timeout once again, great timing for coach Joel Bonal. It was a big run by the LSU. And in the second quarter, Ateneo only two out of nine from the field. And those two came via the three-point shots from uh, Funasher and L.A. Tenorio, while the LSU five of eight. While the inside points, again, the big difference right now. The LSU not happy with taking the shot from the outside. They're attacking the defense of Ateneo. They're up on that uh, category, eight points to zero. While uh, Rich Alvarez, prior to that shot, was 7 out of 10 from the free throw. Now he misses first shot. So still, the score is back. Ateneo 50, and the LSU 46 make it 51 for Ateneo because of that uh, free throw of uh, Rich Alvarez. So let's check out what happened in that last time out of the south. It's here from Hazel Aguilar. In the huddle, Coach Tran told his boys to be more aggressive. He said that they have to grab the opportunity and catch up. Now, Nakna Cardona may not be playing as but he is helping his team by cheering for his teammates and helping them get pumped up for this game. Back to you, Jordan Ryan. Thanks, Hazel. Kasama si Hazel ni Makmak para mag-cheer sa side. Here's one share with the ball. Picks up his dribble, gives it to Ara. So, rookies being fielded by coach Joel Banalier. Chris Chu air balls a three as it sails out of bounds. Last touch by Larry for the share. Defense holding court for Lasalle at that point, but they're having problems on how to break the 2-3 defense of Ateneo. Again, maybe Coach Joel Bonal sends it that Lasalle is scoring a lot of the penetrations and there are not a lot of good shooters from Lasalle, so he's sticking with that 2-3 defense and Lasalle should find an antidote. Maybe shoot from the outside or still break the defense based on that penetration, but then he's a good perimeter jumper from Benitez. Enough to make that defense of Ateneo a little bit decent on that zone defense. The lead is down to three. A precarious three as another steal for the Green Archers. Joseph Yo with the ball. 51 48 our score. Here's Cabano to Casho. Out to Yo. Picks 
Sets it up. Back to Casho. The drive inside. Go with the ball against Tenorio. Out to Manny Ramos from the baseline. He cuts it to one point. The lead is down to one. 51-50 towards the end of the third quarter. On a share with the ball. Ahead to Alvarez. Alvarez, the drive inside. There's a whistle, and that's going to be on Cabatu. But that's still the right thing in the mind of uh, Rich Alvarez. Instead of taking the shot from the outside, in both occasions, he really attacked aggressively the basket in both occasions as well. He was fouled, so again, an opportunity for Rich Alvarez to increase the lead of Batineo, which now stands only one point, 51 to 50. And uh, De La Salle have to take down by eight points at the start of the third quarter, slowly getting in. And Rich Alvarez once again, Banal is uh, trying to inject some life into this Ateneo offense. I mean, he's put in Fort Ara, he's put in Chris Chu. Now, JC and Tal is entering the ball game for the first time here in this, uh, this game. And Andrew McBedek also entering the ball game. Uh, and there's a little bit of confusion here. We want to replace. So Alvarez almost went to the bed, but it was Chris Chu who had to go. So I stand corrected. It will not be a two gift shot for uh, Rich Alvarez. And, uh, but initially, Marco Membrere was saying that he would replace Rich Alvarez. So Rich Alvarez has to go back to the bench now. He's on the scorer's table once again. And the first break, it will come in again. There's that pass, almost stolen again. So Lasalle's defense really creating the turnovers here. Here's Ford Mara on the corner. That's long. Rebound Benitez to the Green Archers with a field goal. Can't take the lead here in this ball game. Benitez, out to Cavato, he gave it to Yo, out to Kasha, Kasha with the drive, Kasha for the lead, missing the shot, we got that out. Less than a minute left in the third, Canoni with the ball, out to Chris Chu, this is J.C. Itan, with the ball, out to Memphis, and that's going to be a jump ball as the ball stepped out of Memphis' hand. Well, Memphis has not been given a lot of minutes here by Coach Joel Banal, so he's a little bit cool coming off the bench here in the third quarter. So again, the aggressiveness of uh, Joseph Yo on both ends of the court, this time on defense. He was making things happen on offense, and right now, it's going to be Magnum and Brere and Joseph Yo on that tip-off on the front court of Ateneo. So here we go. The tip one by Lassau. Again, they have a chance to take the lead here in the third quarter. Ten-second difference between shot and game clock. Yo to Cavate, Ando Tasho, back to Yo. Fourteen on the shot clock. Joseph Yo gives it to Benitez. Cross court, they go. Played by Alvarez. So Lazar not taking advantage of the two opportunities to take the lead. Alvarez with the ball, drives inside. Stolen by Ramos. Nine seconds left. They do have time. Yo with the ball. Five seconds left. Yo looking for three. He shoots the three. That's short. Aro gets the rebound as time expires here as Ateneo holds on precariously to this one-point lead against the Green Archers after 30 minutes of play. 51-50 is our score. Will the see the last 10 minutes of LaSalle or will they live another game on Saturday? 10 more minutes. Ateneo versus LaSalle here on Season 66. Final four when we receive the game and pick it. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good bird's eye view for you. Anina pa yan sa UEFU. Nakapasok yan. Standing room only. Even the bird has to stand. And, uh, he is on top of the ring right now. So here we go. I don't know what's going to happen. There's a quarter scoring. Uh, the South is taking advantage of that third quarter, especially towards the last few minutes. But in the lead to one point. The bird is still there. That's right. That's a distraction for uh, the De La Salle players. Here's Yo as they weave it. More in the shot clock. Casho for three. Missing the shot. Almost getting the bird. And uh, there's a miss as it flies across. And uh, he goes on the other basket. The man. He thinks he's at the nail. So again, La Salle attacking that basket aggressively. Benitez will go to the free throw line. Well, that's yeah, Mickey Yap. Uh, she is our camiseta campus girl of the game. She is from CSB, studying hotel and restaurant management. Be spotted as the next camiseta campus girl of the game and bring home two prizes from camiseta. And they're all tied up at 51 apiece here in the fourth quarter. This is where Lasalle 
wants to be at this particular time. The score is not even 51 points of He's able to chip uh, seven points out of that uh, lead of Ateneo in the third quarter. And right now, the well, good things are happening for Lasal. A missed free throw on the second try by Vidigas, but uh, an early entry by an Ateneo player. So uh, another free throw will be given to him. A bad field goal shooting for the Blue Eagles, resulting in uh, a tie ball game as the Green Archers are able to take advantage of uh, poor field goal shooting. And that has not been the case in the last two games between these two teams. Ateneo has shot very well from uh, the field. But Ateneo was just uh, limited to only nine points by the defense of Lasal. And out of the nine points, two came from the three-point area. Again, from Larry Funasher and one from L.A. Vinario. But if uh, Lasal can really do a good job uh, stepping up their defense, well, Ateneo right now is a confused team. They went up by as big as uh, 11 points at the certain uh, mark, according to the 31st quarter. And still, they have not hit their mark the offensively. And the foul will be given to uh, Magno Membrero. Well, there is a side show that uh, the pigeon is still here. I think it's a pigeon. Uh, I'm not uh, an expert in uh, the kinds <laughs> of birds, but, uh, but he is still there. But one thing is certain, that's not an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Cavato, Lasal looking for the lead in a while. Joseph Pio with the ball against Magnum Membrere. Cross court he goes to CJ Cavato who shoots a three, missing it. Rebound Membrere. Let's go now to Barney Tanuto for an update on Ateneo. Coach Shoa spent a good part of the time out trying to settle down the players. He was trying to get them to relax. Other than that, he just went over the place. The back of Eugene and Ryan. Here's Wesley Gonzalez, he had a long rest. He's been pulled from the bench. He had a good first quarter, but that's about it for the Blue Eagles as he has been in foul trouble. For 14 points of Wesley Gonzalez, he's way back in the first quarter. He was held scored. This is the second of the third quarters. And uh, Ateneo did not get their group going offensively. And Lasal, only one point to show, but still we're all tied up on 51 points apiece. And that is our uh, time here in the fourth quarter. Back. Audio on the left side. Ateneo looking for some offense here, and that's going to be a foul on Manny Ramos. Too aggressive against Rich Alvarez. The second will be called against uh, Manny Ramos, and uh, the first deep foul for Lasal. There's the push by Ramos. Alvarez actually stepped on the sideline, but that was because there was a nudge from the momentum of Manny Ramos. Out to Alvarez, for the cutters. Alvarez, baseline inside, and that ball was stiff. As he was triple teamed, it's going to be a jump ball. So the missing link right now on the offense of Ateneo is Magnum and Red. We mentioned it in the pregame earlier in the last four games. Magnum has averaged 10.4 points per ball game, but zero still at this point as we take a look at the uh, Sonic Cabano, the PBA legend, watching uh, his son. I think that's a quick tip on... Uh, Manny Ramos, you're not allowed to touch that ball until it's at the top of its uh, right during the jump ball and Manny Ramos hit it on the way up. So that'll be Ateneo ball. The Blue Eagles still have not scored here and uh, the Green Archers only one point. I believe, yeah, here. Okay, yeah, out to put a share. Put a share inside. Challenges Ramos, no ball. And it's the South Ball. T.Y. Zang walks it up for the Green Archers. Well, it's been a defensive struggle here in the fourth quarter. Already over two minutes gone by. 1-0 for that score not there. And again, the South will not score in this possession. So effectively, it has become a defensive quarter, at least for both these uh, teams. Ateneo has yet to score in this quarter. Time down to 7 and 38, and Lasal accounted for only one point. But still, I've been saying it time and again, this is the situation where Lasal wants to be in. There's nothing going right here in the offense of Ateneo. They've been missing a lot of shots, but up to this point, they have not made the mark yet offensively. There's a nice cut by Larry Bonacher. A foul will be called on Mark Benitez. Here's that cut by Bonacher. Benitez helping out on defense. 
reaching in, uh, getting a little bit of the net. On the reach in. Let's go back to Hazel Aguilar for an update on Nassau. Everyone in the TLSE Free Archers match is all pumped up. But anyway, Coach Franz Kamara told them in the huddle that they have to step up even more here in the last quarter. He said that they can't be contested with the fact that they were able to catch up. They have to get the win. That they will do right. Thank you very much, Hazel. And both teams have only scored one point here. A free throw apiece <laughs> with uh, almost three minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. T.Y. Tang from the corner, a three-pointer, doesn't go, battle for the rebound, last touch by Kabati. Again, opting to take those outside shots in this De La Salle 5 right now, T.Y. Tang again, a corner, three-point shot, it missed uh, the basket, but uh, Ateneo once again, protecting a one-point lead of this two. Gonzalez, the ball, Gonzalez to the ball, Gonzalez inside, for both teams. 16 points are ready for West Gonzalez's first point here in the second half of match up. And uh, the important thing for uh, Ateneo is that they're up by uh, three points at 54 to 54. Here's Casho, good fake, and he hits the shot. Casho! He cut the lead to one point, so after the field goal of Ateneo, Lasalle answers back with a field goal of her own here. The first in the fourth quarter, Panache cannot handle the pass. That's a turnover for Ateneo. Obviously being bothered by the press and the trap of Lasalle. They've been known doing that uh, trap since uh, Coach Fumaran took over this team. And uh, it was great for Lasalle for uh, Kabato to just buy time and wait for uh, Joseph Young to enter the field again. Joseph needed the rest. He has 22 points already now. He's coming in uh, really uh, well rested here in the court. Here's Joseph Yo, the drive inside, challenges Bukia, the pass to Benitez, he gets two points, Lasalle takes the lead, 55-54. So what can Joseph Yo do to this team? Again, he has scored 22 points already, but more than that, he's got the ability to make the defense work for Ateneo and the great passing skills as well to make his teammates involved. But Lasalle, this is the problem with them. In the first two quarters, they've been fouling a lot, they've been putting Ateneo on the line, Ateneo players on the line too much, and they, Ateneo did not score a lot of baskets in the third quarter from the free throw. But right now, Lasalle already with 14 fouls, so after this foul, free throw situation time again for the blue shirts of Ateneo. Ateneo back in the game, along with two-time MVP Rich Alvarez. Coach John Manal wants to stop this run by the Green Archers as he has put uh, his starting lineup in the game. That's a hand check foul on Manny Ramos. That's his fourth personal foul. And they are now in the penalty. So again, I'm going back to my point. Free throw with still 5 and 50 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Ateneo has not scored the field goal in the here in the fourth quarter, but uh, the free throw has been uh, pretty much uh, above par at this point. Wesley, 12.4 points per ball game, but his numbers has increased here in this ball game. A total of 17 points for him, and still another chance to score on this possession. States. As he plays for uh, Alaska. The Wesley missing the second free throw. This is an interesting five for Coach uh, Franz Pumarin, who's putting in a lot of small guys. In fact, uh, Kabate is playing the four position and Benitez at the five position. So obviously, that was a good uh, offensive rebound by Rich uh, Alvarez. Alvarez out to Ponacher, a lot of time in the shot clock. Ponacher inside the Pugia, turn around jumper, tough shot for Paolo Pugia, and he has hit that time and again to stop the runs of the opponents. That's uh, why he's there on that uh, free throw line uh, position to break the zone of uh, Lasalle. That was a good shot, well, time shot by Pugia. Here's a drive by Mark Benitez, and you can count it for Lasalle as he caught Rich Alvarez by 
surprise. You know, he doesn't normally do that. And I think Rich looked the other way. And as soon as he did that, Benitez drove inside. And Alvarez was already half a step behind. You have to do something different, especially if it's a playoff game. Benitez, again, you've mentioned it. Nobody is used to seeing him but dribble once or twice to attack that basket. But uh, again, that's uh, a new arsenal in this ball game for as long as it's effective to keep on doing it. And uh, Benitez making sure that he will get that end one opportunity and complete that three-point play. The LSU up by one point at 58 to 57. Here's Monacher, crossover move, the drive inside, gives it to Bogia, blocked away, Monacher, the rebound, not there, the tip also not there, ball loose, taken by Yo. And there's going to be a whistle, that's on Gonzalez, that's going to be number four. Joseph Yo is the biggest player right now for the Sal, he's doing everything for his team to survive this uh, contest, and he doesn't want to leave yet, he doesn't want this game to be his last here in the season 66 of the UAAP. 57, 58, Lasalle a one-point lead. Five minutes, five seconds left here in the game. Hands off to Joseph Yo against Bonacher. Yo crossover move inside, tipped away, gets it back. Five on the shot clock. Lasso with the drive, tipped away again. Stolen by Bugia. Here comes Ateneo looking for the lead. Gonzalez shoots a trade, in and out. Lasso the long rebound to Lasalle. Maintains a one-point advantage over at the nail. Kapatu drives against Gonzalez, shoots a three-pointer. Missing a three-pointer. It's a back-to-back -back bad shot. First for the nail, West and Gonzalez, and another bad shot. A clean advice one for Kapatu, and uh, trying to create some semblance of a half-court offense. as El Tenorio and the rest of the Ateneo team. Tenorio, he shoots a three. Hit the by Tenorio, the rookie, against the, the veteran. Hands off to Yo, back to Casso, Casso for three, Capullo! Jamie Casso answers back against LA Tenorio. This is just a great matchup from former San Veteran Cubs players, LA Tenorio, with the two shirts of Adine, and Casso actually back and gives Lasalle another one point lead. Well, this is what we expected from an Ateneo Lasalle match. Boguia out to Gonzalez. Against Yo, this is gonna share. Drives against Kabatu. Back to Gonzalez. Shoots a three. That short. Long rebound. Kabatu. Lasalle still a one point lead. The pass of Castro too far ahead of Jermaine Gakko. Three minutes, 28 seconds left here in the ball game. 61 60, only a one point advantage. Green Archer, Alvin Castro in the house as well, watching the ball game. Uh, by the way, Ryan, uh, I'd like to invite everyone to watch tonight UAAP Central on Channel 48, Sky Cable, that's Pinoy Central TV. This is our Smart Buddy prepaid matchup. Joseph Yo and Larry Ponacher and a monster ball game so far for Joseph Yo. And that's uh, pretty much the average numbers of Larry Ponacher in this ball game. But Joseph Yo came to play. I mean, he is filled in for Mac Mac Ardona in more ways than one in this game. That's going to be 9 o'clock tonight, by the way, our UAP Central. Uh, Coach Ryan DeGloria, I think, will join us <laughs> for that. We'll analyze both ball games in the final four. Inside, Pablo Bogia in and out of the shot. But Rich Alvin is right there for the offensive rebound and put back. But then Ayo regains the lead. That's that sheer power and sheer dominance underneath the first field goal, actually, for Rich Alvarez. But enough to give Ateneo that one point lead once again. 61 62 for Ateneo. Yo gets back for the share inside. Double bumps and gets the two points. 24 points for Joseph Yo. The do it all man for Delasal University. Just an awesome performance for Joseph Yo. Lasal up by one once again. Inside to Bogia. Back to Tenorio. Fakes the three. Shoots the three. Capo. LA Tenorio saves the day once again in that possession. But the Blue Eagles are up by two. He has not taken a lot of shots here in the fourth quarter, but the last two three-pointers, the big shots for Ateneo, were hit by L.A. Tenorio. J.D. Casso will answer back. Doesn't do it. Gakudo gets the rebound. Blocked by Bogia, but there's a whistle. So Jerwin Gakudo will troop to the free throw line to, for a chance to tie the ball game. 
intercepted the nice deep three point shot from Ellie Denorio. Nice step back from Lipton Land. And Ellie Denorio gives Ateneo a two point lead and thanks to Lord in the process. Yako missing the first three point. Serving Yako has another one to put it to one. Two minutes, 14 left here in the game. Jerwin Gapo, not helping the Lasalle Wars, missing both of the free throws. And this is after I said he's one of the better free throw shooters in Lasalle. Zero out of four in this ball game for Jerwin uh, Gapo. There is a big game, and usually big players come out to play. And in and out, in and out, and the three point try. So Lasalle still has a chance, down by two, less than two minutes left in the game. Not showing the ball against Gonzalez. Out to Benitez. Benitez looking for the corner, hands off to the money man, Joseph Gio. Out to Kasha once again, drives against Gonzalez, floats in the air, missing the shot. Ball is loose, taken by Gonzalez. Here's the play, Gakko is right there to go for the And there's some extracurricular activity here. And Jerwin Gakko, wait a minute here, the whole LaSalle bench is out on the court here. They're going to have to regain control. Wait a minute. This is not what we wanted. Oh, boy. So tempers flaring for both squads. This is, uh, this is going to be interesting in how the technical committee will rule this one as uh, we've got a bunch of fans on the court as well. And Alvarez. Let's do it again. Let's, let's look at it again. Well, here's the play. Gonzalez gets the ball. Gakko comes into the play. He grabs the ball. But oh, there's a Tenorio. chip shot by L.A. Tenorio. Yeah, Tenorio. That's a chip shot right there. And L.A. Tenorio got away with that one. And uh, the crowd are uh, up in their arms right now. So L.A. Tenorio got a, uh, a shot in there against Jerwin Gakko. And that's what made Gakko react. That's right. Let's we'll see what the... Aba Dinorio, Ovinere, na Bobe. Tiyan mo nakita. Wala akong nakita. Hello, si nakita kayo? Wala. Wala. Sandem sila may nakita. Sandem sila nakita. But so far, you have decided. Okay. 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 Now, France, coach, that's what they saw. Okay. We'll review the tapes later. Okay. Okay. Good luck. So that's exactly what we were talking about. If they, they, they don't see it, they cannot call it. And that's not the kind of call that they can reverse. So they just have to look at the tape after the game and uh, give suspensions where necessary. Uh, because the only ones that they can reverse are the last second shots. And if it's a three-pointer or a two-pointer, whether it's stepping or not stepping. Right. We're going to have to look back to see if somebody had an extra motion, this and that. So the referee really has to see it live. Otherwise, we'll have a four or five hour ball game yes. and get to review every single play. So, but these plays have ramifications in future games. So if Ateneo loses this game, the Lord is not playing on Saturday. If Ateneo wins this game, the Lord is probably not playing in game number one of, uh, of the final. So, you know, that kind of situation, he should not have put his teammates in because he's a very important cog in this Ateneo team. And, uh, you know, that's, of course, I'm assuming that he'll be suspended because of that punch, which he is not yet. That's right. But the thing is, I was just uh, unhappy with that position of L.A. Tenorio to show something or to throw something at this particular juncture. It was definitely seen on right team, and right now, De will get possession of this basketball. 65-63 our score. We still have a basketball game with a minute 20 left here at the Araneta Coliseum. That's all down by two. Yo, drives against Polisher. Out to Cabasco, heads off the back of the team. Nothing there. Inside, Benitez. going for them and the, the last shot Gakko definitely a different player right now he's playing with a lot more emotions and tenacity and we're all tied up with less than a minute here in the fourth quarter that ball is getting to Gia out to Tenorio Tenorio sets it up seven on the shot clock gives it to Gonzalez Gonzalez drives inside double team passes to Alvarez three on the shot clock what a share of the shot and that's a 24 second violation take a look at our addict mobile
high-profile, spectacular play of the game. And it belongs to Joseph Yo, and he is an addict athlete, I believe. And Joseph Yo hangs in the air against Paolo Bugia, brought to you by Addict Mobile. Get hooked. Uh, he's very happy about that play. So LaSalle has put themselves in a situation to get the lead and win this ball game. In fact, uh, even without Mark Verdona. That's right. And it's a case of when LaSalle can offer a two-on-one, two-for-one uh, opportunity here. Here's Mark Benitez inside against Alvarez. Picks up his dribble. He's still looking. Benitez bounces it with two eye Tang. Tang almost slips and falls. Gets it back. Gives it to Yo. Yo with six on the shot clock. Yo against Bonacher. He gets a screen from Benitez. Yo still has it. One on the shot clock. The wild shot doesn't go. And it's going to be a 24 second violation. No direction in that offense of LaSalle. The ball tied in the hands of uh, Joseph Yo. And right now, the Ateneo will get the last crack here in the last 16.8 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Well, don't go away. Uh, I think we're going to try to listen into one of the huddles here for our Nescafe 3 in 1 break time. Wesley, uh, Larry, uh, LA. Okay. A drive and dish with six seconds left. Whoever has the ball will drive and dish. So we're gonna get a outside jumper from Ateneo based on what uh, Joel Banal said. So here we go. This might be the last possession on the game. Otherwise, we go to overtime. Rick Alvarez goes inside. What uh, everybody could expect from an Ateneo LaSalle game. We go to an extra five minutes to decide this Ateneo LaSalle affair, so don't go away. Welcome to the final four of season 66 of the CAAT on Studio 23. We are in overtime here. Ateneo versus LaSalle. We're all tied up at 65 apiece after four, 40 minutes of play, and uh, we're going to play five more minutes here and uh, just to recap what has happened so far there was an incident with a minute 31 seconds left in the game so we went uh, for 38 minutes 29 seconds without having any incidents and then all of a sudden uh, uh, there was an incident between Tenorio and Derwin Gapo and both of them got technical fouls and then Membrere and Araña got off the bench and they were thrown out because they, they left the bench and both the benches were assessed technical fouls. So all those technical fouls kind of just canceled each other out. So nobody shot any free throws, but uh, it was personal fouls of Gaco and Tenorio at that time. And we played the last uh, minute 31 and uh, we go to overtime. Well, Rich Alvarez had an opportunity to uh, win it in regulation. Unfortunately, he came up uh, a little short in LaSalle. We get first crack at the basket here. 65 ball, and Casal coming on the doors right now. They won a game two in this uh, twice team advantage. By the way, we are being watched live as Masha misses that big one in Madrid. Uh, we are being watched live in the Filipino channel abroad. So, hello, uh, abroad. <laughs> I'm so used to saying hello, Philippines. <laughs> But the little Filipinos not in the Philippines uh, watching the TFC channel. Here's a play, the normal story by Casso. We have one pass play, Joseph Yo. Casso, what a layup. That's a lot of two. This is exactly the kind of defense that Lasalle did when they launched the comeback and still 
here to meet again. This one to two present there has caused a lot of problems for Ateneo. Across to Benjamin Del Rosario. Del Rosario gets past Lasho. Ahead to Tenorio. Inside to Alvarez. Alvarez out to Del Rosario. Tenorio open for three. That's long. Inside to Rosario. Bonashera gets the offensive rebound. So out of nowhere, Nari Bonashera seven. Saving that offensive set for Ateneo with that book box skill 67 more. And Roman is nudging at this point. Casal get him to the opportunity. Joseph Yost with the man. Sessions that time left in our ball game in overtime period. The LSU still on top by two points. They've had a lot of chances here at the nail, but they have not taken care of good care of that basketball in the last two possessions. Casho with the ball. Lasal again. A chance to extend on this lead. They finally get it to Joseph Yo. A minute left in overtime. Yo gets past on the share. Goes against Kobia inside. Gets the two points. Yo, He's got yeah. So with that foul of uh, 
Wesley of uh, Larry Funashere, rather. Two free throws will be given to the red hot Joseph Yo. And Joseph Yo really coming out to play and filling in the shoes vacated by the absence of uh, Mac Pac or Donna. But those are all perfect free throws for Joseph Yo. And he filled the test of that initial free throw shot. This has been as a good idea. Yes. Yes. Uh, they lost uh, the FBU game uh, partially because they missed, I think, four or five straight free throws. Well, the second free throw, one out of two. The lead is good for the Archers. 74 72 is our score. With 31.8 seconds left. That means there's a seven second difference between the shot and game clock. So even if Ateneo scores here, that's all will get the ball back. Want to share? Out to Gonzalez. Against Castro. Gonzalez, back to Bonacher. 10 on the shot clock against Cavalli. Gets a screen. He gives it to Mokia. Five on the shot clock. Oh, There might be a little discrepancy on the calls of the two referees. The other referee was about to count that basket, but the other one nullified that basket. But still, they'll let you up by two points. Two free throws will be given to uh, JB Casio, but this is all that mattered for LaSalle. That one defensive stop right there, and that will eventually give uh, JB Casio two chances from the free throw line. If he makes two, it will eventually become a two-possession ball game and LaSalle up by four points. But still, we have to remember that JB Casio is a rookie. And again, this man is made of so The heart that is, he may be a rookie, but his not is playing not like it here in this playoff game between Ateneo and LaSalle. Well, this free throw will make it very difficult for Ateneo tie the game because it is good possession. With only 9.5 seconds left, Rasha, two for two from the free throw line, shooting like a veteran even if he's a rookie. So here's Tenorio against Casho. They're gonna have to shoot it here. L.A. Tenorio drives inside across the Mugia. Mugia for three, that's gonna be it. The time will expire, there's still 0.3 seconds left. And it looks like uh, the De La Salle Green Archers We'll win this ball game. There's still some time left. We're gonna have to inbound it. But both coaching staff and players have accepted the LaSalle victory. And that's it. Well, they're just gonna automatically get killed the time and the De La Salle Green Archers. Give another day against the Ateneo de Manila Blue Eagles as they defeat the Blue Eagles and gain a sudden death game against their arch rivals to enter the finals of season 66. And that man right there is the reason why the Green Archers have extended this to a rubber match. Joseph Yo, a monster ball game for the Green Archers. 31 points, six rebounds, two steals, and he was the man all the way till the end, from beginning to end. And uh, so on behalf of everybody here on Studio 23 and ABS-CBN Sports, my name is Juta Guara. Thank you for watching the UAAP game. We make it.